the other stuff. You can use the keyword 10 at the show site, and that'll get you whatever information you need uh, to join us on Monday. It will be the final live show of 2019. It will also be the Alan Cox Show 10th anniversary special. We're going to be live in Strongsville at Slim and Chubby's starting at 2 o'clock. All brought to you by Bud Light. So we'll be there. We'll have guests and prizes and gifts and the whole thing. So the more the merrier, quite literally. That'd be a way to blow out 2019 until we go on holiday vacation. And we'd love to have you along to celebrate uh, 10 years of my program here in uh, the land, right? Mm -hmm. The land land. is what the, the kids call it. I was reading about this Belgian kid who's nine and was in college studying electrical engineering and he dropped out what a loser oh my god i didn't even drop out of college (laughs) bill didn't even do that this kid's gonna turn 10 the day after christmas and he's not even in college anymore Mm. what a joke wow oh what a dope ha can you imagine couldn't even hack it what's he gonna say nine like what's he gonna say to an employer you know yeah like when they're like what's your degree and he's like i don't have one at 10 come on man I mean, it's Belgium. We hold you to a different standard. You've been hustling to finish a three-year electrical engineering degree in 10 months and uh, said that it was... Uh, you're 10 years old. What's the rush? His parents what? wanted him to... Gra- because I think, I think it has to do more with these parents. When they realize mm-hmm. early on that they've got some brainiac kid on their hands, they go, oh, we've got to do something okay. with this. Rather than socialize him, we will make sure that we can profit off of him. He would have been the youngest uh, child to land his bachelor's degree, but now they said that his um, course load was such that it was really causing a lot of problems. Hmm. It's almost like you should, even if a kid is a genius, let them be a kid. My mom didn't let me skip a grade because she said I wasn't physically ready, that I was too small to skip second grade, to go from first to third. She She's was, worried about your physical size. She was worried about... you were about, smart enough for it. Yeah, they yeah. wanted to skip me, and yeah. she was said no. She said that I was too little and that she was afraid of how I would interact with the other kids being so tiny. Really? I swear. That was probably a smart move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You think? Well, yeah. I think I, I think her like, intent like was sound. Like that I was going to get bullied or something for yeah, being maybe. like a little kid? Sure. I guess. Uh, but even just being behind, especially as you get into like the middle school grades, if you're developing behind them, as oh. a kid that was very behind when it came to stuff like that, I was bullied very hard. Yeah. And not even looked at like... I wasn't even looked at as like an equal to people that I was like older than. Or you, you mean because you were physically tiny? Because I was physically tiny. But you weren't held back. No, no, I yeah. never, no. Right. I, I would be more concerned about like a kid's, I guess, intellectual development than like the size. Because I was a real small kid mm-hmm. too. Um, and they wanted my middle brother to skip a grade or something. And my mom said no. Either. Yeah. Yeah. I remember in high school, I was mad at her. I mean, I dated, my high school sweetheart was a year older than me. And uh, when I met him, I was like, if you would have let me skip a grade, I would have known him longer because we would have been <laughs> oh, in the yeah. same grade. Yeah, that sounds like someone should have skipped ahead. <laughs> yeah. That, no, that sounds like yeah. a 13-year-old girl who's in love. Like, I, think it ma- I your mom known made, him my whole life. Your mom yeah. made the right that move. That sounds like a 13-year-old girl that thinks they know what love is. Well, yeah, I yeah. loved him. I definitely, I can look Why back and say Why wouldn't a 13-year-old girl know him. what love was? Yeah, Bill. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I still don't think because I it means different is. things to different people. And so at different stages in your life, means it means something to you things. when you're 13, and you know. I very much so loved my high school sweetheart, but it's a completely different love than I had with my ex fiance, and a different love than I would give to whoever I'm going to be with next. Yeah. Oh my god. This Friday night. <laughs> a different love. A different love. <laughs> your boy Jack Black. You know they caught Wait. him on the red carpet. Um, Mary loves Jack Black. And they asked him what his favorite holiday movie was, and he forgot that he had done one. Oh. That's how entertaining his movies are. He doesn't even remember that he's done them. He's also been in, like, 50 movies. Not holiday movies. I think I would rem- Right, not holiday movies. Mm. I think I'd remember the movies I was in, actually. I but that remember. one's not, like, a I don't remember what we did here on the show movie. yesterday, so <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not one that. to talk. That's, yeah. like, one of those movies that's, like, it's a holiday movie, but it's also... Like it's a, it, I would say it's more rom com than holiday. It's not like he was True. in like a Santa Claus movie right. or like I love I gotta, that movie. I gotta save this reindeer. Like it wasn't. Anything it was like set that. over the holiday. Yeah, it was yeah. just taking place over the holiday. Like Die Hard right. is a holiday that, or movie. Or like Batman Returns takes place over Christmas. And you could be like, oh, you're in a holiday movie, right, Michael Keaton? He's like, I don't know. I? <laughs> I don't think <laughs> yeah. I was. What would you say is your number one holiday film that you have to watch every year? 
My favorite holiday film, you know what? It's got to be Elf. Because once again, John Favreau, I don't know if I'm saying it right. I hate him. And Will Ferrell just knocking it out the park. I appreciate the humility. You could have said your own movie. Do I have a Christmas movie? Which one is mine? Oh, the holiday. Obviously the holiday. <laughs> Nancy Myers, genius. Mm-hmm. Don't and then he went, I think, like, I think that's a humble moment. so much that he was like, John Favreau, like, you're not cool. Say his name right. God, I hate that guy so much. You really do. Everything he does annoys me. Everything. Oh. But he's so, like, no. guileless. Yeah. I mean, he's just being having fun and mm-hmm. being cool. And I know. He seems like someone, what is, blows my mind is he seems like someone that you would find so delightful. There's, yeah. a, there's a few people in my real life that I'm like, everything about you on paper, we should get along. Mm-hmm. And I cannot stand one ounce of your body. Wow, it's, like it's Bill me Squire. every like 10 minutes. <laughs> it's it's 10 minutes it goes by, you, you love me, then another 10 I minutes goes by, and you hate me. I hate you with every fiber. I think I said of my chest, yeah. my heart, and my soul. Yeah. <laughs> Three things that I hated you when with. When you grab it, you'll feel how firm it is. And also, you start by just touching it. Chest and heart, you know, getting a little redundant. No. There's other things in my chest. The chest is your cavity. Mm-hmm. The heart. My lungs are is in where there. You hold and your deepest, lungs? darkest. I, all my whole chest. Right. Your whole chest. <laughs> Even them say it with your chest. <laughs> you hate me with your boobs. Yep. Oh. I hate you so that, much. That's what hurts the most. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is anyone paying attention to the Eminem Nick Cannon beef? <laughs> oh my yes. god! No. Yes. I mean, I, I listen. Uh, with all props to Eminem. I don't get Nick Cannon. I, I never have. He strikes me as a talented young man. It's a rivalry between the two. They hit but the same come shit. on. I mean, no one doubts that Eminem's got cred. Nick Cannon is a corny brother. He just is. He you didn't always like roll bounce? No. Or wow. <laughs> Drumline. I, that was I roll liked bounce. Drum- Closest. Was to, that no. was Bow Wow. wow. That, we see? don't all look alike, mm-hmm. Mary. Uh, okay. No, we were just talking about corny brothers. Closest I ever got to something he. Closest I ever got to liking something he did was Drumline. I like so Drumline, drummer, yeah. But the movie was good. Him and, I mean, whatever. But he's like, he's doing this mass Singer, and every couple of years, he like seems to sit down and feel like he has really sold out by all this corny crap he does. So he puts on a dashiki, and he does some slam poetry album with a bunch of N-words. I'm like, bro, you just, you're like... You're like black Ryan Seacrest, and there's nothing wrong with that. Right, just embrace it. But, but he just why, doesn't want to be that. I guess. He's he starting hates to, what he's become. He's back on the radio in L.A., and mm-hmm. they like the company he works for immediately syndicating his show. I don't know who's going to pick it up, but but I guess he recorded an Eminem diss track. Ew. Why? I, I don't know. Because he's not even a rapper, really. N- yeah. Nah. But that's what I'm saying. I think that he thinks he is. Pretty sure he made a song that call it your pops don't like me well he's getting ratioed heavy because it has 3300 likes and about 30,000 dislikes I don't know what the hell is going on. That's Eminem called him a bougie F. <laughs> so, you know. And he said there, there's a video of Eminem S and a D signing a document, which I would like to see. It. I think Eminem's <laughs> funny. I love Eminem. I love a good troll. He goes, I demand an apology, Nicholas. You've made my gardener jealous. <laughs> Everybody, because Eminem has put in the work and he's gotten the credibility over the years. And he's just kind of chilling out now. He's not and really it's doing like, anything. Yeah. And guys like well, MGK and Nick Cannon, and it's like, I just... That's the move to Eminem's try. Eminem's almost out of he's the game. Almost, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. He's not making new him. albums. Right. He's just kind of hanging out. Well, but it, Nick it, Cannon is not going to dethrone Eminem, no, for not, one thing. I, I, you know. He's not even going to get in the same but compound. But the fact that they had to have five guys on one song that diss Eminem just goes to show you. Well, and it also goes to show... Like, Eminem's at home. He's not putting out... The, everything's like, okay, right. we need to get some heat... For whatever we're doing, let's go after Eminem, and like the old, like MGK it used to be Fifty was, Cent. You'd go yeah, after if you wanted. Well, like this, with MGK, like there was actual something. That, there was beef. It was about his daughter. Yeah, but it was like Eminem said something on one of his albums about MGK, and so then he's coming back at him. Well, like, I, immediately no, that's, that started because MGK was hitting on Eminem's daughter. He said something in a song. Yeah, 
And then like, Eminem said it, something about MGK on a song, yes. and then th- that's but it was, how it started. But this is like out of, I mean, even if there is something going on with Nick, Nick Cannon, Cannon and no, his... It was between them. It, it was because Eminem... Uh, used to mess with Mariah Carey, like they used to have. Like, but how long ago? Oh, this is years In the ago. 90s. Right. Well, that's so why. This is like. This is when you're. you're, you're well, this ago. is when you're really I've been waiting. This is when you're for really digging moment. for but things this, to be upset about. This is the second beef, though, because this is why Mariah came out with uh, uh, that song "Obsessed." That was about Eminem, and then Eminem came out with a song called "The Warning," saying that like if Mariah Carey doesn't shut up, he's gonna air all. I don't her even know what laundry. these songs are that you're talking right. about. I remember uh, obsessed. "Obsessed" by Mariah Carey, and then that was a yeah, good one. the warning was like a diss track. And then Nick Cannon was like, "Oh well, I got skeletons to release out of your but closet too." But isn't he blah, blah, not blah. with Nick Cannon any? Like, or Mariah Carey? No, and Nick they're not Cannon. married anymore. That's still his baby's they're, mom, though. Yeah, but it's the, one of those things where I mean, if this were timely, it makes sense. But it being years and years later, it's yeah. really just yeah, it's no, very contrived. Stuff. I definitely, I mean, he he's definitely it, promoting something. He I don't know why he's reaching from that well, but I I'm, think it's because people are worried about the state of our dis economy, <laughs> <laughs> and they know go do Migos or something that if the gross dis product drops mm-hmm. below thirty percent, listen, Eminem is the fifth most streamed artist ever. I'm surprised he's around the, the world. Taylor Swift. I mean, no. She's not number one. Who's number Drake, one? Drake, Ed Sheeran, Post Malone, Ariana Grande, and Eminem. I'm getting into Post Malone, man. I, I, I like, like Post Malone. Malone. I'm yeah. getting into it. Yeah. yeah. He, that song, the song he has right now called Circles is what I was like, okay, I really like this. And every time mm. it comes on, I'm kind of into it. And then I like have started just shuffling his songs on Spotify. And like I would just, I just am really digging no, what that guy's he's, doing. He's good. He does good stuff. I like him. He's not a rapper. He's but he's not like really a singer. Yeah, he's just kind you know of a musician. I mean? yeah. Whatever. Kind of doing his thing, I guess. Yeah, I Ariana like him a lot. Grande. Well, Ariana Grande, that's another one. I have I like a lot of her but songs. But like but the thing is Dangerous Woman, what a sexy song. The only one that's not like I like a lot of her, just not her songs. Mm-hmm. All hundred and eight pounds of her? <laughs> yeah. uh, I was gonna say the, the <laughs> she only falls thing, within my category. <laughs> the only thing di- different out of that list is Eminem is the only one that's not cons- consistently making music music like he's but he not had relevant. It for it's so long. Years. He was at the top of the rap charts for decades. No, you tell you tell the crowd. I saw Eminem at ACL a couple years ago, and my wife's been an Eminem fan since like he Burst. was still <laughs> handing around mixtapes around yeah. Detroit, right? So I was like, okay, cool. Eminem was one of the headliners, one of the night. You tell 70,000 people in that park that Eminem's not and relevant. He has it was so an unbelievable show. Hits. It's mm-hmm. one of those things, too, where it's like, I like, know play so Play that funky music, White Boy. Yes. Ice Ice Baby. Yes. The Ninja Turtles song. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> thrift shop, <laughs> yeah. thrift store, things whatever. that you know every single word to mm-hmm. when it comes on, even twenty five years later, and it's like I can still rap every because single word. Because he to did, this song. and to your point, he did almost two hours. He never played one full song. He doesn't he, have to. He doesn't have to. He, this guy was able to do a two hour performance of like half of his songs, a verse and a chorus. Yeah. And yes, that's it. yep. And it was fantastic. Now on to more important things because you know it's winter time now. It's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. But when it does get better, that's when people start looking ahead to springtime in Ohio, summertime, you know, which is going to get more punishing as the climate continues to do whatever it's doing. And it brings bugs. It brings all kinds of unwanted uh, things into your life. And there is a man overseas who they have. This is a Ugandan man. And... um, a pesticide company is very interested in talking to him because he has farts that kill mosquitoes. <laughs> and he has been, uh, he has taken meetings with an insect repellent company, more than one, in fact. And they're doing tests to determine the chemical properties of his gas. Citronella. Deet. He's eating citronella. <laughs> Deet. Uh, they say that whatever this guy is kicking out, I don't know what he eats. They don't get into great detail. Maybe it's, a, I don't know what the Ugandan cuisine is. Maybe this guy's on a steady diet of plantains. I don't know. But they said that um, in direct contrast to a lot of people that live near him, there are no mosquitoes anywhere near this man's house. They're attributing it to his farts. Hmm. They say, all we know is that when Joe is around, mosquitoes are not. He is known all over his city as the man who kills mosquitoes with his farts. And so he has been contacted 
by these uh, pesticide or insect repellent companies to try to suss out what's going on in his bowels. He said, I bathe daily, I smell like a normal man, it's just that my farts are fatal to mosquitoes. What a gift. X-Men, it's Isn't finally it? happening. <laughs> yes! <laughs> It's his mutation. It's probably his diet. Wouldn't you like your it's face on a raid can or something, mm-hmm. though? Like, if you had your own... Lo- Everybody wants their own perfume line, I guess. This guy could have his own mosquito repellent line. It's like you spray it and you're just like... <laughs> 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 That's right. <laughs> but so hey, no mosquito. We can mm-hmm. finally have a backyard barbecue. It's like off. <laughs> you can't mm-hmm. spray it on yourself. Well... So they're talking to this guy, and they want to figure out what's going on down there. What's it's doing? It's a real double-edged sword. If you you want to bring him, you want to invite him to your cookout. Be stinky. Then he's gonna be farting. He's only him. stinky when he farts, though. Yeah, but and you excuse only, yourself and go to the bathroom. Him. Yeah. No, you need him you to need fart his outside. Farts. Fart, need, have him fart in a jar and then open you it. You need him to do a perimeter works. sweep. You know, and farts fart. don't work that way. Yeah. Farts could work that way. You can't and store then, a jar for 10 years, or you can't store a fart for 10 years. I don't think farts have that kind of shelf life. Don't they just dissipate mm-hmm. into nothing? You don't nothing? put them in a jar. Yeah, still gonna... How do you keep a fart in a jar? <laughs> I literally just Googled yesterday when I was on my couch, why do why don't your own farts bother you? They do. Um, sometimes. Pardon me? <laughs> Listen, I Who are you? Smell your farts? <laughs> they don't bother me. Uh, yeah, well, I'm not <laughs> a gassy guy, you. but yeah, they don't bother you. Mm-mm. You're like, that smells perfectly not fine. Not fine, but it's one of those where it's like, not like when Bill farts and I'm like, oh, it's, oh. it's <laughs> you, not like that. Not like, like, I'll fart and be like, oh, uh, that's a fart. Because you're yeah. used to it. That's what it was like. Uh, yeah. There's no scientific research done. I read like 10 different like websites. Mm-hmm. And it was like, there's never been a scientific study about it. But mm-hmm. one thing they're like, maybe when you're like in nature, you're supposed to be on high alert. So you kind of tone out your own smells, which is why people, when they stink like their body odor, they can't really smell it or whatever. Yeah, oh. used to it. That yeah. it's something that your, your body well, doesn't really pay attention to because it comes from you. So it's not something that's alarming. It's, I explained this to him. My daughter all the time. <laughs> That's very smelling like Bill's farts. <laughs> I, uh, she's very much likes cats, and I'm like, I hate cats. I don't like cats. I don't ever want to own a cat. And she's like, Oh, but there's one nice about. I'm like, I don't care how cute they are. I can smell it. As soon as I walk into a house, I can tell if you have a cat. And she's like, No, you can't. You wouldn't be able to smell it in my place. I'm like, I can smell it immediately when I walk into your place. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's true. It's terrible. Can you smell it when you come to my house? Yes. Ew, I really? can smell it at anybody's house. It's like people who don't think you can smell that they smoke. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay. I obviously, see, I, that's. I, I, Growing up in a hoarder house with so many cats, I'm like, I'm so anal retentive about that cat. I vacuum every other day. I change the litter box matter. every no, single matter. day. Nothing gets rid of it. Yeah. <sighs> Nothing gets rid of it. Because you smell like the, the cat odor is in the air. Do I smell like a cat? No. Okay. But ah. your house does. <laughs> like bad? No, it's not bad, but it's noticeable. And I don't like it. So I don't smell Yeah. Booty, yeah. Booty cats. Cat smells. Mm-hmm. Whatever. And again, it's the same thing with a dog. I just don't think dogs are as stinky as cats. Well, it's because they pee outside. Right. Yeah. You just answered your own question. If, yeah, you, have an an, like, if you have an animal peeing in your house, yeah, it's going to smell like that. Yeah, but I like... Remember, I no matter how much magic sand you try to put I, over I it. I know, and I change the magic sand every day. Yeah. It still smells like a cat. Oh, I don't like that at all. Hmm. Well, I guess There's you know what to solution. do now. I'm not getting rid of the cat. You take the cat for a drive. I have come. No, I have come to the conclusion that that when this one dies, I'm not getting another one. That this is going to be my pet, and that's it. But I'm not getting rid of the cat. How Just, old is she? She's only five. Oh. She had not much longer to go. Hey, uh, <laughs> throw it down the steps. Just no! throw that cat down, and it'll be fine. Uh, there are no down steps. I'm as far down as they go. Throw it up the steps. <laughs> <laughs> She'll land on her feet. <laughs> you think it's injured going down the steps? Wait till you whip one up the steps. How did your cat die? Landed right in the top step, right up there. <laughs>